DJ C A Y N E, that's me. And shouts out to my boy Mac Eleven. He made a post about DJs recommending other DJs to use wave files for better sound quality, but not even taking into consideration that what if the speaker suck or what if the other equipment sucks? You're gonna use wave files to get better sound quality, but you're not even looking at the speakers or anything. So we're gonna talk about that. I had a class last year that i hosted the behind the decks session and we're gonna have one this year again but i mentioned sound quality when it comes to sound quality it is a streamline and it starts in the studio the file the studio how are you exporting that from your daw or whatever analog equipment you're using so majority of tracks today are made or exporter from DAWs, Pro Tools, Acid, Image Line, whatever you're using. If you are a producer and you're making your own stuff, when you export the tracks, make sure if you're using WAV files, that's cool. That has a broader platform to give you a, a, a better sound quality. It's, it's, it's best to use that when you're breaking down stems. But you can also use MP3s too. Remember, WAV files are very heavy. So if you have a DJ that has a heavy crate, like 10,000 plus songs type crate, they're not going to put all wave files on there and blow up the, uh, their hard drive. Okay. MP3 is ideal. When you export from MP3, 320 kilobytes per second is ideal. You want to use that. Okay. That's the baseline. 320 kilobytes per second. That's going to give you the elevation to get you an ideal sound quality. But... Before you do any of that, you got to make sure if you're mixing and mastering it in your studio, in your DAW, make sure you don't suck at that. Because if you do, that track going to come out garbage regardless of what you got. All right. So that's step one. Make sure you know what you're doing. Your engineer know what he or she doing. Then you export it on 320K kilobytes per second. At least MP3 file because the wave file is huge because it's for DJs now. Then the next step. You got the file, it's good, mastered, whatever, MP3 file. The next step is, of course, if you're using DJ equipment, make sure that, you know, you have your EQs right and everything, and whenever you throw it in. Um, most DJs are going to be DJing from a laptop, so it'll be like laptop, <clears throat> laptop going into the DJ mixer or controller going into the speakers. Now... I'm assuming that your equipment is up to date, so your sound card in your mixer shouldn't phase anything, right? All it is doing is communicating the data from the file going through the controller, which allows you to manipulate the sound using your EQs and your faders and all that, effect buttons, not the quality, right? A sound card is going to give a good quality too, right? So we're assuming again that you got up-to-date equipment as far as your DJ controller or mixer. Now, the next part is that it's got to go through the speakers. So in the post, it was saying like you got speakers from like 20 years ago type stuff. Yeah, man. Speakers are very important. You got to make sure that they're up to date. Look, I'm not a master sound engineer, so I really can't go too deep into that. But just know that if you're playing somewhere and you know your files are good because i could tell you about that part but let's say you know your files are good and you're playing it at the venue and it still sounds like crap it's probably the speakers ask the engineer the venue owner on deck like hey like how old are these speakers have y'all checked the cabinets have y'all checked the subs what's up with that okay so just keep that in mind y'all you can do your part first because i'm not like a I did sound work back in the day, but I'm not like an in depth. I can't tell you like, oh, this speaker has like a whatever tweeter, the blah, blah, blah. I'm not that. But you can still listen with your own ears. You can tell when something's off. But just knowing your part, you can make sure that if you're exporting or getting your music from record pools, DJ City, BPM Supreme, you know, they're you could trust they're going to give you good quality files. Anywhere else you're getting them from, SoundCloud, if you're downloading music from SoundCloud, you probably want to check on that because it's, a lot of these SoundCloud rappers and stuff ain't giving you what they, whatever. And, you know, but some of them got their shit together, some of them don't. Another thing is, I, and I want to bring this up. This is like a side note, but exporting tracks. If you're getting your tracks, if you're like using these off the wall 
programs online to steal tracks from YouTube and iTunes and stuff like that, you are not getting good quality sound. So I've heard a lot of DJs that I've played along with and I see, I can hear y'all play tracks that clearly sound that they've been ripped from YouTube and then I play my track and there's a clear sound difference. People can hear that, okay? So what I'm telling you is stop ripping off music off of YouTube unless you're using a reliable app, a reliable one, okay? If you all using these little free programs, you're probably getting crap audio, okay? And that's probably why your shit suck. So, look, man, it's your boy DJ Kane. You can do the sound quality check on your end. Use reliable DJ pools. If you got your homeboy, homegirl making you tracks, Make sure that they know what the heck they doing when it comes to mixing and mastering, really listening. And when they export, get that MP, MP3. I like the WAV files that y'all send me. It's cool. But they just too big, bro. And I'm not trying to break down and remaster some crap, bro. I got send me MP3 this quality, all right? So I can save some space. Real shit, all right? It's your boy DJ Kane. Hopefully this video helped. Um, I just saw my mind because I saw that post. Mac 11. Appreciate you, bro. But yeah, man. I'm, I'm out. Um, yeah. Y'all have a good day. Bye. Yeah.